Hey guys, welcome back to the homestead. Constance here. Um, so I'm just kind of checking my tomato plants, seeing as I pulled out that sick uh, tomato plant from this bed, as well as one out in, in the big garden. Just uh, checking things over, making sure I don't see any signs of that virus on my other plants. Hopefully I don't. Hopefully that is it. Um, I had someone ask me if I had pulled out the roots uh, of the sick plant as well, and I did. I, I had cut the, the plant down at the stump and kind of removed all of the plant. And, and actually I kind of cut it in pieces as I went to make it easy because it, it's kind of intertwined in the trellis. And uh, so I cut it into pieces and then I went back with my trowel and I, I got the root system out as well. Uh, at least most of it. I know there's no way you're going to get every one of those little fibrous roots uh, out of there, but I got as much of it as I possibly could. Um, and like I said, hopefully I don't see, hopefully I don't see any more signs of it. That really, it really stinks to go through and, you know, spend weeks, months growing a tomato plant only for it to get big and beautiful and then boom, sick and, sick and dying. So I thought you would enjoy going for a little bit of a walk in the woods with me. So I took the camera out there and, and showed you a few of the scenes there uh, in our woods. I found several animal dens. Um, I think I showed you one of those videos and don't know what's in them hard to tell. I'm sure at least one of them is going to be an armadillo because we've got armadillos everywhere here. we got some really big ones too. But then we've got, oh, you know, bobcats and possums and all the critters. <laughs> so just a little update on the green stalk here. In most of the cells, I am seeing all of the beans sprouting and coming up. Uh, some of them have actually got nice little leaves on them already. It's only been a few days, but we've got beans. Uh, don't see any zinnia sprouts yet, but those are going to take a little bit longer. Beans grow super, super fast, so those are almost always going to be the first things that you see sprouting anyways. So I didn't do a video on Wednesday because uh, every so often I get migraine headaches and the types of headaches that I get, the migraines are generally optical migraines which uh, affect my vision. Uh, hard to edit a video if you can't see a computer screen. So um, sometimes, sometimes they're mild and, and you know, sometimes they're not and when they're, when they're not, I just have to kind of walk away from any sort of screen and just kind of take it easy for a little bit. Alrighty, so I am out here uh, working along one of the fence lines. This is a stretch that I come through on one of the tractors, whether it's my little John Deere garden tractor or if it's my Mahindra, but I come through here mowing. And I don't know if you can see, but there is a whole lot of wild blackberry briars. And as I'm coming through here on the tractor, and year by year they are encroaching on the fence line. And as I'm coming through here on the tractor mowing, they like to reach out and bite me. And they don't tickle. So, I've got my pruners and I'm working my way down, all the way down through here. And I'm trimming everything back, uh, trimming back the blackberry briars, trimming back the branches from all these trees, just to make it a little bit easier to get through here when I'm mowing.
Now I've had several people ask me about these skirts that I wear and they're actually skorts which is a mixture of a skirt and shorts because underneath the skirt part it's a, a very lightweight mesh kind of shorts and these came from Duluth Trading Company and I'll tell you right now they are not cheap I did not pay full price for anything but I was at the store uh, when they opened up last year in Madison Alabama and I thought these might be kind of nice so I bought one I think it was like the next day I wore them out in the heat I was instantly in love now they have different varieties and I have like three different kinds but these ones in particular that you see me wear the most are called dry on the fly they breathe they're cooler than shorts they dry quickly from sweat which you know we have a little bit of that here in Alabama so uh, I love them I like I said I wore them that first day I was instantly in love I went online while they were all still on sale and I bought them in every single color and I pretty much live in these all summer long I love them the only time I'm not wearing them is if they're all in the laundry and I gotta wear something else uh, but yeah I, I love these things like I said they're not cheap so I would if you were interested in getting some I would wait till they go on sale they've got sales every now and again and uh, you know get yourself a, a, a set of squirts and the other thing that I love about them is the pockets this this particular set the dry on the fly they're like a cargo skirt there's a front pocket down on your left leg that zips closed perfect for my cell phone especially when I'm on the tractor because I've had my cell phone fall out of my pocket and almost get run over by the tractor several times that pocket zips closed there's a long pocket on the back of the leg uh, which I think they call the pointy tool pocket there's uh, your normal front pockets there's a tiny little zipper pocket on on one side which is perfect for my camera batteries so yeah dry on the fly great pockets oh not sponsored or anything just sharing information So it's too far away. There's actually a rabbit right down in the pathway watching me. So I'm in an area that generally stays really wet. Uh, I can I can really only mow this particular spot a couple times a year because it takes so long for it to dry out. It's it's always wet. It's always moist. I mean, even right now, my grant my boots kind of sink into the ground a little bit. The plants are different in this area. The grasses, even the trees, definitely a different sort of uh, ecosystem in this little pocket right here but I wanted to show you something. That rabbit's still sitting there. So you can see how in here, there's, there's really not a lot of undergrowth, but look, I don't know if you can see, look at how the vines are just reaching across the soil there. It's kind of wild.
the other thing that I noticed was right here is some animal tracks. But this is definitely a nice, cool spot. It's shaded, you got the moisture in the ground. If I was a deer, I'd find a bed in here. <laughs> so I've been busy cutting and I got down right about to where that rabbit was sitting and I turned around, came back to get my camera, and lo and behold, there was another rabbit sitting right under my tripod. <laughs> but it was quick, and it bolted into the trees before I could get my, my uh, phone out. Oh, so, I've got most of it done now. I've just got, I don't know, 20 more feet to go. But uh, I wanted to show you some of these briars. These are the kind of wicked things that like to reach out and say hello. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is, this is kind of a once a year sort of chore. Generally I do it right after, uh, right after we've gotten into the summer temps and usually right after I can mow this the first time and realize, oh my goodness, the briars have grown and I need to deal with this. Um, yeah, but usually it's once a year. Um, I might have to come out again at one point and just like do a couple things here and there, but this long process of going all the way through here is just a early summer, late spring sort of thing. So I'm actually back almost to that spot where uh, I saw all of the evidence of the wild hogs, the feral hogs, but I've had cameras out all over the place, multiple cameras, and I think they've moved on. I think we missed the opportunity this time of, of catching them on camera. I know that's what it was. There's nothing in the woods that makes that kind of disturbance on the ground. Uh, and like I said, I've only seen that when they come around. But that said, even though I'm pretty sure they are moved on, um, I still bring my, my backup with me, just in case. So this is one of the chores that has needed to be done, this, this trimming along the fence line here, just because I, I mow this area. The other thing that is going to have to be done is I'm going to have to come out here with the chainsaw because this area is nice and mowed and clear but right back here is where the fence line goes into the woods and we have had a bunch of trees come down over winter and honestly we've just not had the time to get out here and work so I think um, as soon as we get a nice cool spell I know I know we're going into summer in Alabama that's that's laughable right well as soon as we have <laughs> a spell of a day or two where the weather's not wretched, I'm going to have to um, fire up the chainsaw and head into the woods and do some cutting and clear, clear the rest of the fence line and do some repairs. All right, so one last thing before I wrap up this video. Uh, I have a lot of people who have asked me about what do I use for um, bug repellent, bug spray? Especially since I'm out here in the woods and I'm out here doing all this stuff a lot. Now, if you're new to my channel, the first year that we were here on the homestead, I actually contracted a tick-borne illness. I had Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, which was not a cool situation. And it does make me a little extra cautious about um, ticks, mosquitoes, and all of that. Not enough so that I want to spray my body down with DEET. I'm just saying. Uh, I tend to go with natural things. I mostly use the doTERRA Terra Shield blend. It's a blend of essential oils. Now they have it as a spray. I think they have it as a roller bottle. And then you can get the pure essential oil blend. 
I just get the essential oil blend. I make my own spray out of it. And that's what I use. And as long as I put it on, I don't get bit. No ticks, no mosquitoes, nothing. Uh, we've got, of course, the mosquitoes and the ticks and all of that. And then in the evenings here in Alabama and most of the South, we get those itty bitty, you can't see them, but man, they're gonna zap you, especially on the back of your knees where it's super tender, <laughs> little gnats. And they bite like crazy. And I, I truly cannot come outside in the evenings if I do not have that on. And you may have seen a couple mosquitoes buzz around my face, but they don't land, they don't bite me. And as long as I use that Terra Shield, I am good to go. Now I did see a couple weeks ago that over on that 1870s homestead, they shared, uh, Rachel shared a recipe for a homemade bug spray made out of essential oils. And it looked like a really good blend. I have written down the recipe, I have it saved, and I actually have everything that goes into it in my house. And so my doTERRA uh, Terra shield is getting a little bit low, so when I run out, I'm gonna mix up that blend and see what I think of it. And I can report back and let you know what my results are. But in the meantime, if you would like to see what that recipe was, I will put the link down below to the video where they shared that bug spray recipe. So that is it. I'm gonna wrap up this video, head into the house, get cleaned up, and get started on dinner. I'm just making a super easy, low carb chicken Parmesan and I've got some um, almond flour pasta in the freezer. It takes like 90 seconds to cook. And so that is what is going to be for supper night. So that is it for today. Thanks for hanging out with me as I got some work done out here and saw some rabbits and just enjoyed the fresh air. If you aren't already subscribed, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and visit once again. My name is Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread and I'll talk to you all next time.